Well, 2020, I think, has really felt like one of those really, really long road trips that you went on as a kid. You remember those where you would just look and you would up and you would just say, how much further? I think that's what we're all asking right now is how much further? I, I remember as a little kid, we had a station wagon. It was a country squire. It had the wood paneling on the side, looked just like the one you see in Vegas vacation. Uh, I'm, excuse me, in, in Christmas vacation, in, in Christmas vacation. You know that, that one with the gr green pan green and the, and the paneling on the side? That's the one that I grew up in. So every time I see that movie, I am reminded of my childhood. And I remember I remember the vinyl seats. And in, in the hot summer on a road trip, you'd be sitting there for hours, and then you would get up to get out, and you'd go, and you'd remove like three layers of skin. <laughs> Anybody remember that? And I just remember the road trip just going on and on. I'd get tired. I'd want to lay down. And this is back in the day where nobody wore seatbelts. I mean, this is back when parents cut seatbelts out of, out of cars. And the reason we did, by the way, is because our cars were built like tanks. The, the country squire was like driving a tank. There was nothing that was going to happen to us. And so when I get tired, I just try to lay down on the floorboard. But anybody remember this? There was a big hump. Anybody remember the big hump in the middle? So I would lay a pillow on one side, a blanket on the other, and try to level it out. I'd had a jumper seat in the back, way back in the back. You could pop up the back, and it would fold out, and so you'd be facing like this. So you're driving down the highway like this. I always loved when truckers would come up, because when the truckers would come up, I'd do one of these. Huh? Some of you need to teach your kids that. that that's old school right there, but that was fun. But there were no electronics. There was, there was no Game Boy. There was no... Uh, th th there was no uh, I iPhone, there was no social media, there was, there was no internet. I mean, do you get, all I had was a color book. <laughs> I'm not making that up. That was it. And when I finished coloring, my mom was like, I'd be like, I'm done. What do I do now? She'd be like, look out the window, play the alphabet game, do something, but you're irritating me. And I, I did, anybody remember stopping? Like there was no love's truck stop. I mean, you didn't go in and, you know, there's a subway on the side, pick up some snacks, go use a clean restroom. You know, there was, there was only rest stops. Anybody remember rest stops? You had the concrete picnic table and a porta potty. That was it. That's how so many of us are feeling right now. I mean, we are miserable and we're wondering how much further. Like way back in March, you binge watched every show you could. Now, as we get ready to maybe, is things shutting down again, you have nothing to watch. And you're like, your kids, if you have kids, they're like, are, some of them you're like, are they going to school Monday? Are they not going to school? Are, are they going to come back after Thanksgiving? Are they, are they not going to come back after Thanksgiving? I mean, we're, we're all tired. We're all wondering and how much further. We're looking out the window and we're wondering how much further. I don't think it's just the virus that's spreading. I think there's something much more dangerous that's spreading. I think the enemy right now is spreading discouragement, disappointment, doubt, and complacency. And the place he's starting is in the church. He's starting with us. And the reason he's starting with us, because we are the hope of the world. Like, he knows if he can get us down, if he can get us discouraged, if he can get us complacent, like get us out of the word of God, get us off of our knees, get us only checking in every four to six weeks or a couple times during the pandemic, and you know, I don't really need to do this right now. That's the enemy is speaking all those things into the church right now because he knows if he can get us complacent, if he can get us discouraged, then the world has no chance. So here's the thing we need to remember, though. The devil lost at the cross. That's a good place in the chat to light it up and say amen. Like the devil lost at the cross. But we cannot forget and we should not forget that the devil didn't stop at the cross. He, he basically said to himself, okay, if I can't take Jesus down, I'll take his church down. So here he is in the early church going after them, persecuting them, getting them, trying to get the church shut down. Sound familiar? Trying to get the church shut down. So Peter writes this letter to encourage the church to endure. 